this talks more about the diabetic foot rather than foot care. So this, I thought I'd start off with some of the images of the types of things that we see in clinic. I'm a podiatrist. I've worked um, in the high-risk foot clinic since 1999, so kind of get used to seeing this type of thing. And I think this is a prime example of um, that microvascular complications, because remembering the diabetic foot's a mixture of micro and macro complications, most of it related around um, neuropathy and changes to collagen in the foot, leading to complications like this. This gentleman um, was working, he's a cleaner, he was running his own business and wanted to continue doing that. He thought he was starting to feel a bit off and perhaps his foot was getting a bit smelly so he should do something about it. So he was still working when he presented with this. If he'd come into your practice and you'd asked him how were your feet, he would have said okay, because he had his own business and he wouldn't have wanted to stop working. So, and he had very dense um, polyneuropathy. He also, if you can see the shape of his foot and where the ulcer's located, he also had a Charcot foot. So I'll speak briefly about that towards the end of the talk, okay? Just a little thing of why it's important to take somebody's shoes and socks off and get have a look. Don't believe what they're necessarily telling you. Hold on. So um, a just quick overview. So why all the fuss? I'll give you a few facts about the diabetic foot. What's been happening in Metro Auckland? I'll try and take a, a metro approach, even though I'm more familiar with White and Mutter and Auckland DHBs. Got a bit of... Um, knowledge around the counties and also have a look at screening and when and where to refer, okay? So some of you might have seen the series of um, ads and um, articles in the New Zealand Herald over the last few weeks. We've noticed a slight increase in people attending, people ringing up and asking questions about their feet and some studies have shown that it's one of the um, most feared complications next to losing your sight from diabetes as well. Actually, I better put my glasses on so I can read my notes. Yep. So these um, infographics are from a podiat a, an American podiatrist um, website, David Armstrong, um, on the diabetic foot. But I think globally it's quite a major issue. And in New Zealand it's a growing problem too. And we're seeing more amputations happening and more diabetic foot ulcers in younger patients as well when you think we're getting an increase of the um, young people with type 2. And neuropathy is one of the complications that they're getting earlier and sooner. So um, the lifetime risk is quite high with um, to develop a foot ulcer. and they go on to become infected and that, that increases the risk of amputation. Um, and it's one of the leading causes of amputation. Also where the foot ulcer occurs is of um, concern as well. If they're on the heel and they develop osteomyelitis, then they're more likely to end up with an amputation. So getting um, wounds and ulcers treated early is um, really good. And also, if somebody goes on to an amputation, they're very likely to have the contralateral limb amputated. So I guess the thing is that getting in early and referring early for complications is, um, is great. And we'll talk about that as well. And I think with what was um, spoken about in, with um, eye disease as well, it's the same for diabetes. When you're thinking you're starting to develop neuropathy, that's your nerves are actually an organ it's end organ, it's failure, it's um, advanced disease, it's time to be having those conversations. If they're developing diabetic foot ulcers, it's definitely time to have that conversation as the next <coughs> slide will show. I keep clicking the wrong side, my apologies. So it's the um, risk of death with, uh, within 10 years is twice as high for somebody that doesn't have a foot ulcer. Um, diabetic foot ulcers, double mortality and heart attack risk while increasing the risk for stroke as well. So definitely that um, cardiovascular risk management's key and important. The five year mortality rate for amputations and, and also for foot ulcers is second only to lung cancer. 
So we think patients think cancer, they get worried. They get a foot ulcer, they're not quite so worried. It's actually a really serious complication. Okay, it's not just a sore on your foot. And um, the mortality rate at five years is 70%, but with those receiving um, renal replacement therapy, it's 74% at two years. And retinopathy, nephropathy, and neuropathy go hand in hand. Did it again. So some of the implications for this is around hospitalization and costs. Um, it's quite expensive and it um, takes up a big chunk of the um, budget, the health budget. In, the, in New Zealand, the cost of managing um, the ulcers and the endovascular um, interventions required, it's expected to reach $1.8 billion. So it's, it's climbing and it's yeah, quite, quite expensive. So if we can get in early and prevent these problems, it's great. There's also the societal costs and for the patient and loss of income, loss of quality of life and um, supporting and living with your whanau, all that. So in New Zealand, it's the leading cause of amputation. Amputation rates are increasing. Um, our minor amputation rates, that when we say minor, we mean toes and maybe half your foot, whereas our major amputations are, are increasing slowly, and that's below knee and above knee amputations. Um, we have quite marked discrepancies. The rates for Māori are much higher, 65% increased risk of amputation for Māori. So when we talk about screening later, you'll see that in there is one of the risk factors. Um, that really needs addressing. One of the articles in the Herald also discussed that, and there's um, things like institutional racism may well be a key impact in that. There may be around foot morphology and some differences that we're not quite sure of yet. And there's also regional variation of rates of amputation as well. So we've got a bit of a postcode lottery happening around, um, I guess, access to care and also management and likelihood of um, amputation. Metro Auckland, on that regional variation, we're actually doing okay, we could do better, but that's partly because we haven't got far to get to specialist services, we haven't got um, the rurality um, that some of the other DHBs deal with and around access. I just wanted to pop in their patient perspective. Um, this was one of the participants of my research and just to, and most of them spoke about how important their legs were to them and that they could have it quite, it, it's that wake up moment. So if somebody does get something wrong with their feet, I think it's a really good opportunity to have some um, conversations with them and you may find they start to attend, they start to do something about their management. And to them, it's an outward sign, a manifestation that actually all those things they couldn't see or understand, it, there is something happening and going wrong. And he kind of felt like things were getting better, but you know, he could look at his legs and they, to him, they just looked like shit compared with what he did. And he was active, he was doing waka ame, he'd done lots of water sport, he was running, he was doing heaps of things. So for him, it was a massive change in lifestyle. And the reason that he knew there was something wrong with his foot was he thought he had a blister, he could smell it in the car, and he thought it was rotten meat, and he realised it was actually his foot. So, and he'd avoided going to the GP. He kind of kept changing GPs, and he kind of had denied having diabetes for about 10 years as well. So just remember that added fact, neuropathy, it's, it really does add a whole um, degree of complexity to what's happening. There is hope. Um, well-organised care and early referral can make a difference. This, my kid's Lego, and it's just there to try and demonstrate. And when we look at the screening um, slides, we can identify those at low risk. The, um, and this would be roughly proportional to what our risk stratification of our population would be like. About two thirds would have low risk feet. About 20% um, about would have moderate risk. And then we've got high risk people. And then we've got those that have active complications that take up one, between one to 4% of the um, high risk cohort of patients. 
So in Auckland, we did a, we've just done an amputation audit, and um, I think that highlights, one of the things that's come out of that for us is that it was very similar. We had 80% males, which amputation rates tend to be higher for males. Rates of diabetes aren't necessarily, but the rates of amputation are. So, um, and we're not sure 100% why that is, but, um, and also disparities by ethnicity with Māori having a much higher rate, and also Pacific having a higher rate, but not as high as for Māori. The really alarming thing was that foot care service utilisation, only a third was seen by the high-risk foot clinic prior to amputation, and considering when they get an ulcer, that's where they're meant to be referred, and generally an ulcer will precede amputation. And only 20 of those um, admissions, when we went back to primary care records, had been documented as having attended community podiatry in the six months prior to admission. So are we targeting the right people with our referrals? Are the services appropriate for the people that have been referred? Are they attending the services? Are the services making a difference? So kind of some things to look at as well. And the um, graphs there, just to show, to reiterate the rates around ethnicity. So we've got um, Māori, Pacific and non Māori and Pacific. And just putting up here also, you can foot screening. I heard from some that who, somebody spoke earlier and said 90% rate for their foot screening, which was awesome. And they were telling people off if they weren't doing foot screening, which was fantastic. But I think you can also start to really um, target your people, your higher HbA1cs, but also those comorbidities that go along with it around retinopathy nephropathy and peripheral arterial disease as well. So we have some fairly clear um, guidelines on screening and foot risk cat categorization. Um, they're on the NZSSD website and the next slide will show where they're also available to you. And we can confidently know that the low risk group that we identify, because people worry about not them not getting care or not getting attention, with and they're quite um, they've got a, a basically a 99% chance of staying ulcer free over a two year period. So good education on foot care and um, knowing to come in and get care at the right time, fine. Moderate risk, six fold increased risk, high risk patients, 83 fold increased risk. So this is where we really need to be targeting our energies in there. Um, so, and just more recently, um, I think it was actually 2018, they did a um, predictive a study looking at the risk factors and taking all the previous um, studies into account and they found previous ulceration, inability to feel 10 gram monofilament. Everybody got a monofilament in the practice? If you haven't, look up. Um, touch toe test because you can use your finger. And absent pedal pulses were the three factors that really predicted um, risk of amputation. And they're covered in the guide, guidelines. When we did 2016 review, we found only 30 to 40% of the eligible population received a foot screen. So I guess this is my, my call, to, call to arms. Health pathways. All familiar with that, and those pathways that I just showed you, the NZSSD ones are embedded in there, and it's we've got a tiered service, we've got um, the active foot, and then the high risk and the um, moderate risk, which would be your primary care, your PHO services, and your active foot complications would go to your secondary services through e-referral. The in remission group are those with healed ulcers, and we know that they've got um, poor outcomes in all other groups as well, and they're high risk of re-ulcerating. So we, um, quite often those people will stay in the secondary services and be managed there, some back in the community, but that's why there's a very big focus. And I would ask that if you have people like with um, that in your practice that maybe check their feet every time they come in, given you've seen some things that people won't tell you about. Renal disease, we know that it's an added risk factor. It's, you know, the um, golden ticket really for heading towards amputation combined with diabetes. 
just pop this up there, corns and callus. If you see corns and callus and significant um, <laughs> corns and callus, the color of it, this isn't ischemia, this is actually hemorrhaging or bleeding into the tissue underneath from high, high pressure into the area. And you'll sometimes get patients coming back saying the podiatrist caused the hole in my foot, but we need to bride it back quite often underlying there's issues there as well. And another reason why you refer them off and get that managed, if that doesn't get debrided, it will track abscess and can lead to problems as well. Just um, thinking about living the challenge for patients as well with neuropathy, there's other issues that sit in there. They hate it, they find it really hard, it affects their balance, it kind of affects their daily life and it can affect their hands as well. So just pop that in there. When it comes to active foot complications, rapid referral to specialist services is really important. The wound you can see there wasn't referred in to us for at least six months. It was heading towards a year. Once we get chronic wounds like that, they're really hard to heal. We'd like to see them straight away so we can get the MDT in there. We can get offloading modalities into there and manage that, get that healed as quickly as possible. When you do see the wound, I'll um, just flick through these. Looking at the needs of the wound, and that would be good wound care, um, referring into the clinic. Is there an ischemia, ischemic element? Do they need a referral to a vascular as well? Is there a diabetic foot infection happening? So really those competing circles and what your priority would be at that point. Diabetic foot infections. Um, there's variance in the guidelines. BPAC is different from the Auckland guidelines. We're going to have a look at that and perhaps see if we can get something into the pathways from the regional pathways around managing diabetic foot infections. But they can rapidly deteriorate um, and they can also, they're best managed with the multidisciplinary team and they can be hard to assess because you've got a dulled inflammatory response. So if you've got a scheme, you may not have the same response. If you've got neuropathy, you're not necessarily going to have pain as well, but looking at the severity of the infection. Osteomyelitis. Um, just remember, it can't be excluded on x-rays. It's going to take at least three, if not more, weeks to appear, the bony changes on x-ray. So if you suspect it, don't, if it, the x-ray doesn't show it, don't necessarily rule it out. Again, I'd refer it on as well. This one didn't hit bone. Acute ischemia, just remembering your if it's acute limb ischemia, medical emergency, need to get onto it. There's a really good, um, good fellow webinar around recognising um, vascular emergencies in primary care by Vanu Bahmidi on the Goodfellow site, if you want to have a little bit more at that. Chronic ischemia, again, referrals through to vasculars, particularly if they've got gangrene, rest pain, and active ulceration with an ischemic um, component. But do the referral to both services because... They need good wound care and management as well. And that's to your multidisciplinary um, diabetic foot clinic. Don't forget Charcot foot. It sometimes gets missed. Um, and you can get sudden swelling and you get disorganization of the bones in the foot and continued weight bearing will deform that foot. So that foot needs to be offloaded. Quite often ends up being serial cast for at least six months until it settles down. Again, early referral for that as well to your diabetic foot clinics. And I know all the DHBs um, in the Northern region have diabetic foot clinics and those um, referral criteria are on there, on the pathways. So that's a quick, like through the diabetic foot, but just to recap, it's common and it's quite costly. It's the majority of foot problems are preventable. 80% um, of ulcers, are preceded by an episode of trauma, so good education around what to, um, how for patients to look after their feet, have good footwear, because footwear causes problems as well. Screening and risk identification, remembering your newly diagnosed type two, start screening then. Type ones, again, not for five till the five year oh. mark. Um, it's quick and it's easy to do a foot screen. It takes two to three minutes. Um, rapid referral, for acute problems 
and good cardiovascular risk management, and I've included diabetes in that management there. There's a real link between the two. Podiatrists that you're referring to in the community-based services could also be feeding back to you around undiagnosed peripheral arterial disease if they're picking up irregular heart rhythms, so they can be impacting on that cardiovascular risk management as well, and education and empowerment um, for your patients around looking after their own feet as well. So thank you.